All right. Um, so thank you so much for having me uh, on the on the show, guys. My name is Shamim. Um, you must have read my uh, about my profile, but I'll give you a little introduction to who I am because I think this is my second time on uh, the PIVIC uh, platform. So my name is Shamim Rajani, and I am the managing director and CEO at Genetic Solutions. Genetic is a technology company dedicated to providing end-to-end -end IT solutions and services. So most of our clientele is in the US, and uh, we do some work in Europe as well. Uh, I'm also the founder of Code Girls, which is a tech training bootcamp for girls in Pakistan. So one of my main goals uh, and passion is to improve financial inclusion and gender disparity in the technology domain. So I, I work very hard in that area. I'm also currently the vice chairman at Pasha and I lead the diversity and webinar committee. I also very recently have uh, become chair of the skill development committee. So two areas that I'm very really focused on. Uh, I am also a little bit interested in, in agile development and blockchain, so I also sit on some of their boards in Pakistan and across the world. And I do, I am also an advisor on the Women in Tech PK platform. So that's a little bit about me. But my topic mostly today is um, to talk about innovation in, pa in the Pakistan tech industry. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is basically how we are doing right now, uh, what we are doing as an industry, and uh, and then how, what are some of the areas that if we push a bit more, we might look much better than what we look today, uh, uh, you know, for ourselves and for the world as well. So I've been in the industry for a while, but the, the last five years have been really exciting, especially the last two to three years, but the five, I mean, let's talk about five years. They've been really exciting. The Pakistan tech industry is really shaping up. If you look at the numbers, we have around 25, thousand graduates each year coming out of universities tech graduates there is and that count and 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 the ratio is around 40 to 60 percent male versus female uh if you talk about the growth of the it sector uh, it had stayed a little bit uh, uh, you know in the previous years but um, so just to give you an idea of how quickly we are moving forward even though covid hit and most of the industries had uh, you know saw a backseat uh, globally and throughout Pakistan, the tech industry actually saw a 24% growth in the second quarter of 2020. And this comes without saying, um, I, okay, we, we have little support from the government and a lot of this has been the effort and the, the nights that have been put, by the, put in by the private sector themselves. So, um, and to give you a little idea of the kind of um, technologies that Pakistan is really working in these days. So apart from the open and closed source technologies that you know everybody's working on, there's a lot of work happening in the AI and ML domain and uh, as well as the blockchain domain. There's also a lot of work being done in the IoT domain. So the reason of you know coming here and telling you about this is because uh, most of the time uh, when you talk about Pakistan in the global world, uh, they don't know exactly what Pakistan is uh, working towards and doing in the technology domain, most of the, of the people think that Pakistan is basically still just more like an agricultural country or a country that you know manufactures uh, stuff. But um, uh, so, so, so I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you exactly you know how exciting and how um, thrilling and how fast paced the technology domain in Pakistan has become. So think about 25,000 graduates each year and, and growing by the year. Um, so and uh, so apart from the, from the services and the products industry uh, that have been growing because of you know better uh, access to infrastructure and fast internet, uh, you know we've, we've been able to push really good services and products into the market, uh, not just locally but also globally. The startup ecosystem has started to grow as well. So ever since 2010, um, we've seen around 700 startups churn. Uh, churn up and around close to 70% of those are actually still functional. So that tells you a lot about the startup ecosystem in Pakistan. I'm not saying that, you know, we've matured and we're there, but, um, you know, being uh, being a very young industry, I think uh, that that's an achievement that we should be proud of. Uh, if you look at the investment side of things, uh, the, in, the, the industry's understanding and access to, so first of all, understanding, because I think for, for the longest time, 
we did not understand the ecosystem. For, for myself, I would say I did not understand it. But now the industry's access to seed and private equity and venture capital funds is also improving by the day. By the day, so I want. I don't want to give out any names here, but there have been many, many startups in Pakistan. You know, every other day there's a startup uh, in Pakistan that is either getting access to, uh, you know, private equity or they're getting access to investments um, uh, and good amounts of investments. So, without taking any names, uh, just that area is ab absolutely improving. Uh, one of the other things that is very exciting and that has come up in 2020 is the, the improvements that have been made in the e-commerce sector in Pakistan. So if you um, if you're a Pakistani and you've been to Pakistan recently, you would know that, you know, cashless economy is still um, not uh, um, as common in Pakistan as it is in around the world. But what the e-commerce, what, what the Ministry of Commerce is doing along with the private sector is that they are uh, bringing improvements into the e-commerce sector by give, giving incentives to the buyer. So one of the incentives that has come out is, um, uh, so, uh, so, you know, giving, so, so uh, usually, you know, the GST in, uh, uh, in Pakistan is around 16 to 17%. But if you, buy stuff through you know online payments or through cards um, then you have you you just have to pay a five percent gst so there is a huge boost so not not that all provinces have actually acquired it so far or implemented it but some of the provinces have and the, one of the provinces they actually come brought it down to two percent gst if you used your cards so that is on the buyer side. What is happening on the vendor side? Because one of the biggest pain points of Pakistan is that we do not have a PayPal or um, uh, or the likes of it's still uh, still functioning from Pakistan. And even though we've been trying very hard, some of the things that the private sector is now doing with the help of the government is that we are working towards on a roadmap to creating our own payment gateways and creating our own you know escrow systems. So and that is very close to being. Um, implemented or coming out um, either end of this year or sometimes next year um, and one of the other things that maybe you know i am guessing a very few of you know is that pakistan is ranked the fourth country um, uh, you know the first fourth biggest country producing um, um, uh, freelancers uh, in the world so it, it, it's ranked number four on that um, and because I represent the diversity and the inclusion sector in Pakistan, one of the beautiful things about um, this area is that uh, even though, I mean, generally the, uh, the, the, the percentage of uh, diversity is not that good, but it's really improving in the technology domain. Um, thank you to awareness and thank you to uh, the understanding that, um, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the women, um, uh, women, women can be actually just as good as men when it comes to you know building applications, testing them, rolling them out, being creative about it. So just last year, uh, the company that won the diversity award in Pakistan uh, at Pasha was uh, had a, a close to twenty seven percent diversity. This year, just now, I can see companies running and you know uh, running in the race, and some of the companies have a have a higher diversity ratio. Uh, then 30 percent which is, is really exciting and i'm really happy to sort of like share that with you one of the uh, other pain points in pakistan was the ac academia industry gap so just producing 25,000 graduates each year is definitely not sufficient for a, for a country that is just picking up and you know run, uh, has just made it to the race and is really looking up to bring its uh, uh, revenue um, to close to a 20 billion in five years so one of the things that the, the, the private sector is doing with the help of the public sector trying to involve the government as well is to bridge the industry industry academia uh, gap. So a lot has been happening in that regard. I myself have again been doing some work. Like I said, I also represent the skill development committee at Pasha and we ha are speaking with stakeholders to work in that direction. Um, so like, like I said, some of the things that the government has been doing is that they've been in incentivizing the private sector 
by uh, promoting cashless economy, uh, bringing five, by bringing it down to 5%. Um, the government is also talking about brand Pakistan. So that is also happening. That is also in, in the making. When I say brand Pakistan, what I mean is, you know, uh, making sure that Pakistan is looked upon as a technology hub among other players like our neighboring countries. So there is there's this um, export ma marketing fund and export development fund that, that the private sector is in talk with the government to get it released. And as soon as that happens, I think you will see a lot of a lot of new uh, build up happening in that area as well. Um, so. Um, So yeah, I mean, um, generally as an industry, um, now that you know we are in close uh, liaison with the government, we are confident that in the next five years we should be able to meet the 20 billion revenue target that we are dreaming about. Uh, the revenue right now, uh, let me tell you, is uh, close to a, uh, to a three billion. One billion being uh, coming through state bank, and the other two billion coming through other channels. Uh, but so so this is the target that we've set for ourselves and uh, thank you to better policies that that are being sh shaped up and you know efforts being put by the private as well as the public sector to ensure that IT becomes one of the most you know primary industries in Pakistan. So yeah, having said that, I think a lot some of the some of the um, uh, responsibility also falls on the shoulder of the Pakistani today, uh, not just in Pakistan but uh, you know in the world around. You need to make sure that you bring out the better picture of Pakistan rather than talking about the flaws. I mean, every country I'm sure has flaws, but rather than talking about the flaws, let's talk about the good things about Pakistan that were already there and you know more in the making and coming, mm -hmm. so that the the world sees Pakistan as a more uh, you know um, better place to live in, better place to do business with, better place to invest in. So uh, with that, I would like to. Uh, leave the uh, board to see if there's any questions that you might have for me right now. Uh, so, uh, Mozima, are there any questions? Yeah, we do have some questions for you, Shamim. Uh, there's this question about what is the future of blockchain in Pakistan? So, uh, that, that's, that's a really good question. So, right now, as per policy matters, blockchain is not allowed in Pakistan, neither is dealing in cryptocurrency on the uh, on the government side, but because Pakistan does a lot of outsourcing and we do a lot of work for the US market, there is resources, there is this talent pool being, being built in Pakistan ever since 2017 or 2016, you might say. So there are companies in Pakistan that are actually working in blockchain, building uh, you know disruptive technologies for the, the audience that they have sitting in the US, but itself not in Pakistan. Awesome, thank you. Uh, the next question uh, is uh, top five most innovative companies, startups in Pakistan, in your opinion, if you want to share. Sorry, but what was that? I didn't. Uh, the question is uh, top five most innovative companies or startups in Pakistan, in your opinion. I would, I wouldn't want to, which is why I was very careful not naming any because I don't want to name one and not name the other. The startup ecosystem in Pakistan is young, but there's a lot of work being done in the lot. So I'll, I'll tell you sectors that are, that, that work is being done in, rather than giving you names. So there's a lot of work being done in the health tech sector, in the ed tech sector, in the logistics sector. So these are, uh, uh, and also in the fintech sector. So these are areas that, are, that we've, we've seen a lot of improvement and they're very promising. Those startups are really, really promising. Let me tell you that. Awesome. Uh, the next question we have is why women are not working on DevOps site like Docker and Kubernetes? I wish we would. I wish we would, but um, so it's it's a long way to go right now. A lot has doesn't have to do with the women themselves. A lot has to do with the mindset itself, right? So having women work in DevOps means giving long nights. Means you know. Uh, dirtying your hands uh, with uh, that that side of things, um, it will happen. But right now, it is not happening, and I think a lot of this has to do with uh, the the cultural norms in Pakistan and and the mindset. So we see women on the development side and on the DevOps side, but there are very few names uh, in that area. Hopefully, three years down the line, I might give you a different answer to that. Hopefully. Inshallah. Uh, there we do have one other question. A uh, question that says, what is your advice for students in final year of their undergraduate degree in computer science to perform excellent in industry? In the Pakistan industry? Is that a question for the Pakistan industry? 
Okay. Yes. So, uh, so I think uh, in, in your final year, the, the first thing that you should do is make sure that your final year project is something that that you you build in in liaison with the industry. So get in touch with somebody from the industry to guide you and mentor you in that, because that will not only tell you what is where is the gap and what you should be working on that will also tell you what technology stacks you should follow that is very important so understanding the technology stacks in the market because that is our biggest pain point what, what happens is sometimes academia is behind what the industry is following in terms of technology stacks right so when 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 the, when the individual comes out of academia and moves into the industry we have to give that person six months to a, to a year to actually bring them at par and you know up to speed, so that happens. So definitely, FI, FIPs can play an amazing role if they basically make sure that they have a mentor from the industry. Great. I will take a couple more questions here. Um, so there is one question that: What would you suggest for someone looking to initiate a startup? How to build team, uh, USP, etc. I am not from the startup ecosystem. I think Jahan would be a better person to answer that question because I do not uh, work in, um, in the startup ecosystem. No worries. Um, there's a question. A lot of people struggling with depression find it very challenging to excel in careers. Any advice for them? Again, I think depression um, comes uh, it comes differently to everybody. Everybody has a different way and, and the reason for depression. Um, advice would be, uh, I think it's very, very important if, if the depression is coming because uh, of, uh, so is it coming because they're not excelling in their career or is it coming because uh, they, there's too much work because it comes because of both in this technology domain when you work here. So is it because they are not excelling in their career? Is it that? Uh, it doesn't say in the question, but I'm assuming so, so, if it, so, can answer. so if it's because they're not excelling in their career, then I think they need to uh, look for mentors. And um, it, 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 um, it, it's beautiful uh, these days in Pakistan, the last couple of days that, you know, mentors, uh, mentors are in the thousands and hundreds. I mean, people come to me for mentorship every other day. And I'm more than happy because uh, I know that when I'm mentoring them indirectly, I'm helping the industry grow. And so, you know, so they, they should seek mentorship if the depression is because there is too much work and, you know, they, they're not able to cope up with the pressure, then I think uh, getting a better work life balance would be the way to go about it. Awesome. We'll take one last question here. Uh, this is about what is stopping startups from this region to become unicorns or expand in other regions? No, my area. <laughs> startups from Jahan. Okay, we'll definitely get, uh, move these questions to Jahara and uh, get them. Um, so, you should be the best person to answer these questions. Great. Um, thank you so much, Amin, uh, for being here and sharing your thoughts about the innovation uh, in Pakistan industry. You shared some really amazing facts. I uh, will definitely share the recording and um, they were very useful for a lot of our audience. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Have a nice day. Love face. Love face.